Welcoming John to the Hall of Fame is Isaiah Thomas, class of 2000. Ladies and gentlemen, John Stockton. Thank you very much. I'd like to start out by thanking Isaiah for coming up here and presenting me this evening. Uh, don't know everything about each other all the time. We've, we've had some tough battles, but uh, one thing I know for sure that he showed up many times in my life and made major impact for me. And uh, a lot of it's behind the scenes. And thank you, I appreciate it. I'd like to congratulate the class of 2009. Um, you guys represent the best that sports have to offer. Extreme competitiveness, intelligent, prepared, courageous. You made competing fun, and you make sports fun to watch, so thank you. So what am I doing here? I'm a small kid from, from Spokane, Washington that was uh, mooching Noah wafers off my neighbors who are here today and waddling around in big shorts, and now I'm being inducted into the Hall of Fame in, in short shorts, so <laughs> something to miss. I do know that I played 30 years competitively, um, three at St. Aloysius, four at Gonzaga Prep, four at Gonzaga University. In all those years, not once, never, was I the best player on my team. I had a shot at it one year because two of our best players got hurt, season-ending injuries. One of those is here today. I wasn't even the best player in my own house. My brother Steve boasts a record of about 1,000 to 1 in bloody driveway battles. And uh, that one victory, though, ended all the games. So that's my one claim to fame with Steve. You get out there, there's a large group of people that traveled over 1,000 miles, some from Hawaii, some from Alaska, just to support me. You almost start laughing there, because I think they actually came to see Michael. You know, he, make, he makes one big shot, and everybody thinks he's kind of cool. I don't get it. <laughs> Out here in the crowd are our lifetime family friends that never miss the call to raise money for trips or for, for uniforms. Then they'd support the family by going down to my dad's tavern, Jack and Dan's, and expertly critiquing our performance game in and game out. They continued that process for the 19 years watching the jazz on satellite. Somewhere out here are, are, are my friends from Salt Lake and the Utah Jazz that adopted me into their family, welcomed my family as it grew and grew and grew. Better not forget, before I kind of get interrupted here, not forget to thank the, the people from the NBA and US Olympi USA Olympic basketball for providing the place where, where all my dreams played out. Thank you. So I'm here because I represent the talents and efforts and beliefs of hundreds, maybe thousands of people that contributed. The top of the list is mom and dad, Jack and Clemmie Stockton. Before I get to him, Larry Miller, our team owner, used to st start crying when he talked a lot, and he'd take a credit card and kind of scrape the tears off his face and just keep plowing through. I don't know if I'm going to be so lucky, but Dad, you're, you're my idol. Always have been, always will be. And um, I try to copy you daily. <laughs> Mom passed away a few years back, and she, was, she had tremendous strength and grace. She deserved to be here. <laughs> I hope you know how much I love and appreciate the both of you. Steve, my big brother, ideal big brother. He's here with his family, Mary Ann, Steve, Sean, and Riley. He just seemed to know when to rough me up a little bit and when to dust me off and pat me on the back. I guess I must have needed an awful lot of beatings just for my own good. <laughs> Stacy was the big, best big sister a guy could have. Unconditional loyalty and friendship 
enhanced by some world-class cookies and a whopping laugh that it's unparalleled. My little sister Leanne, perfect little sister, tough and caring, insists on doing things the right way. Someone I've counted on for insight throughout all these years. My first buddies, George Lucas, Steve Brown, I know Steve's here tonight. Growing up in a neighborhood, those bonds of friendship run deeply. My first basketball coach, Kerry Pickett, back there, provided the foundation for basketball. Taught and challenged me in so many different ways and still does today. Soon after coach, though, I, I had uh, several coaches that took chances on a small, skinny kid with enormous feet. Terry Irwin and Ed Smith, coaches at Gonzaga Prep. Dan Fitzgerald took a gamble at Gonzaga University, giving me a scholarship. And then he uh, backed it up with awful lot of tutoring afterwards. Jay Hillock, the head coach at Gonzaga U, trusted me despite all those darn turnovers from the one-handed passes that he hated so badly. Unlike today, Gonzaga, um, it's come a long ways. They are uh, very proud to be a Zag. But unlike today, they have towels and they actually have a shower in the locker room. We didn't have any of those things. Jerry always used to say, you, step, you have to travel the old yellow school bus once in a while so that you appreciate things. Well, we appreciate it a lot at Gonzaga because we rolled broken vans or a broken blue military bus, and uh, we really learned to appreciate it. If we could get to a game, we knew how, we had a chance to win. <laughs> Our trainer, Steve DeLong, is here. I uh, used to joke that he was supposed to help me, not hurt me, but uh, Right when we started weightlifting our freshman year, he had these, these delightful lifting drills, and I cramped up, both hamstrings cramped at once, and I was frozen, I couldn't move, and he just waited and let me holler for a while, and eventually came over with a smirk and helped me out. But since then, he's been remained a valuable friend, workout partner, rebounder, and advisor for many years. Frank Layton continued taking the risks when he drafted me 16th pick overall. I'll never forget Hot Rod Hunley's announcement uh, when, when it was received by the fans with a mixture of who? and booze. I think they wanted somebody else. <laughs> I had to be the only draftee, in fact, I almost guarantee it, the only draftee that was still living at home with his parents at the time of the draft. <laughs> so he was way out there on a limb. I learned a lot from him before he turned over the reins to Coach Sloan. Now, Coach Sloan is what the NBA should, should be about. Committing to your teammates, your coaches, your organization, and the game of basketball. He's never asked for credit. In fact, he avoids it. His record speaks for itself, and he's created an environment for his teams to win, and they do. Fortunate to play for you, Coach. Congratulations again. We were both fortunate to have Phil Johnson and the other coaches, as well as a long list of committed players to compete with. I see Mark out there, Thurl, I think, uh, Tyrone, Jeff, uh, just to name a few. Tremendous guys to play with, and it was an honor to be able to compete with you guys day in and day out. Now, one guy I probably should mention, just a little name, is Carl Malone. He can't be here tonight. Yeah, Carl Malone. I'll do respect, David and Tim, but the greatest power forward that ever played the game. He can't be here tonight. He had an illness in the family, so uh, I will continue on by just saying he, he was our best player for 18 season, and he drew a lot of attention. I wish he was, I wish he was here tonight drawing a little bit of attention. <laughs> Used to tell him it's mighty lonely up here, but I'm going to save this tuxedo and press it up for next year for him. <laughs> I've had the same commitment behind the scenes from day one, way back home with the coaches of many, many sports, Coach Bob's out there, um, people behind the scenes, Virginia Pickett, Dale Goodwin, Father Coughlin, Steve Hertz. Uh, great friends that have stuck with me, the docs from Spokane that have kept me healthy, as well as the, the people from the jazz. Judy Adams is here, the PR department. Got very used to hearing the term no, but thank you for asking when they would ask to go for do an appearance or something. So. And the trainers and doctors are here, well, and, and again, we all know we, we can't do anything without them, especially Craig Bueller, Greg Roscoff, a couple of guys that worked their magic and countless hours. Um, after the games were over. Finally, none of this could have happened to me or the Jazz, in my opinion, without the, the courage of, of one man, Larry Miller. Larry Miller is the owner of the Jazz who passed away this past spring, and his wife, Gail, and his family are here today. He turned, this jazz into a, turned the Jazz into a winner. Uh, I guess we just played follow the leader because that's what he is, that's what he was, a, a winner. Gail, Greg, family, thank you for sharing him with us. He's a great man.
They say that a good man needs a good woman behind him. Well, I'm not sure I want my wife, Nada, behind me. My peripheral vision isn't that good, and she has great aim. But uh, she stood beside me for 23 years, and uh, her dad, Mike Stepovich, and, and a large part of her 15-person family are out there as well. Uh, to support me tonight, but she was my best decision. I always knew that when I left for a road trip, I could shut the door behind me and go to work because I knew everything at home would be taken care of. And uh, thank you, Nada, for being there. <laughs> my dad used to say, girls will ruin your game, and I I'm pretty sure that he's right, but I couldn't hold out forever. <laughs> My, my, young, my youngest son down there actually pointed out that I actually got better once I had his mom to show off to. <laughs> Together, we've been blessed with, with six remarkable children. <sighs> Houston, Michael, David, Lindsay, Orr, and Samuel. I'm very, thank you. I'm very proud of all of you, and I love what you bring to the dinner table each night, and it isn't the food. <laughs> Houston, your work ethic and determination are, are a glowing example to your younger brothers and sisters. Michael, your gift of communication lights up a room. With your outgoing personality, there's just nothing like it. I know some of you, Charles, you ran into that a couple of times. David, with your contagious sense of humor and appreciation for everything in life. Lindsay, you mix an amazing array of talents with the grace of your grandma, Clem. And Laura, you're the kindest, sweetest warrior you can meet at any, at any venue. And Samuel, last but not least, your spirit and enthusiasm rounds out our team, and you keep our house hopping. When I think about all the people who have touched my life, helped me along, or brought out the best of me by whatever means, I'm overwhelmed and, yes, humbled. I can't begin to adequately thank even a few of you. It's, it's, the crowd over there is amazing. I want you to know that I feel honored to be able to stand up here in front of you and represent all of you on the stage tonight. To everyone back home in Spokane, back home in Salt Lake City, or maybe wandering around in Springfield looking for a ticket, <laughs> or anywhere else you might be, thank you for sharing this honor with me tonight. Good night. <laughs>